This is the Philosopher Countenance Philosophy Minute. Every year, the U.S. President is required to make a State of the Union address to the administrative branch about the country's big events. Though the communication is constitutional law, advances in telecommunications technology has transformed a bureaucratic handwritten letter to a spectacle of 535 elected officials listening to a speech with all the pomp and circumstance of a royal wedding. If you follow politics at all, State of the Union addresses are an anomaly. Most of the time, all involved parties fling quite a bit of shame back and forth at each other in the hopes of directing blame away from themselves toward the opposition. Politics lives in a world of nothing but perception. Contrary to work closely involved with truth, like plumbing, big data, and mowing lawns, politics can use plenty of framing to craft a narrative that sounds perfectly reasonable, even if the facts don't line up. Politics careers provide much more room for creative adjustment of the facts than anywhere else in this world. Let's say you were an employee painting in a house, and as you finished, the client ran out screaming at you that it was the wrong color. In most lines of work, you'd contact your boss, and the two of them would battle out the terms of their agreement. They'd be engaged in a conflict, and both of them would speak persuasively. But everything would have some bearing on the truth. In the end, the entire conflict would come to a screeching halt when either employee knew more facts or a court of law upheld the facts. The world of politics is free from requiring facts behind their discourse. Since the average citizen trusts outlets labeled as news sources, they outsource their research and inquiry to large organizations like CNN, Fox News, Reuters, and NPR. Most of the facts politics uses are actually pretty unsubstantial. Statistics are captured data, which means the source of the data capture determines its legitimacy. Individual stories reflect individual biases and don't create a general case. Quotes, captured images, and video clips typically don't capture the full meaning of the concept behind whatever it's capturing. Further, for the sake of emotional impact, many of these sources use emotional words, hyperbole about consequences from the actions, phrasing that implies more than it means, and omission of key details. If the previously stated house painting example worked the same way as politics, you could theoretically blame the customer and contractor for failing without specifying why, or you could share a statistic on how 89% of the people like that color, or you could show doctored images of how the color really looks contrary to what the customer was saying, or you could even go for broke and sue the customer for racism. The farther removed we are from the items we control, the more complicated the truth can feel. If you watch the currently unfolding battle between Oracle and Google, you'll quickly discover that the laws around computer code and copyright comes from whether a creator is typing code or creating a creator. Politicians are faced with the guarantee that they'll always displease someone. Every organization's leadership, from corporate to sports to nonprofit charities, have to direct the narrative to create the best possible optics for the people who matter most. We don't usually notice it because their narratives are at least 80% true, with the rest made of interpretations and vagaries. The reason we notice it all the time in politics is because only about 40% is solid truth, and the rest uses partisan storycrafting. The facts are far less messy. Most sane people want clean air, fresh water, fair and just laws, economic prosperity, safety, the right to pursue their dreams, the right to their own body, rights for children, a decent living wage, sufficient health care, freedom to make mistakes, freedom to be human. The trouble isn't usually the battle over desired results. We are usually battling over the methods to achieve these and how we prioritize them. This world is inundated with bleak circumstances where we must choose between two things guaranteed to harm us in different ways. Every large decision has implications, usually ethical, that affect ourselves and those around us. We often approach life lackadaisically when we hear others' claims. We'll take their statements as largely true and trust their good intentions. The truth is that we've all been lied to since the printing press and before. We are more similar than politics and news would tell you, but have differing angles of approaching the problem from competing philosophies. Our philosophies differ from our unique experiences. The farther back in the change of experience to philosophy to belief you can go in learning about others, the more truth you'll uncover. Thanks for listening. Now go find the truth.